Hi everyone and welcome to the video on periodic trends. Um, this video is actually going to be split in half. So in two videos um, we're going to talk about trends in um, the size of atoms and the size of ions. That's going to be this video. And then in a second video we're going to talk about ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. Um, so the biggest thing is we are going to have to justify these trends and justifying all of these periodic trends usually can be simplified using one of the two general generalizations um, we can use effective nuclear charge to justify trends across a period and then we can use um, increased distance or our value of n and shielding to justify trends going down a group so typically we can use effective nuclear charge for periods and distance and shielding for groups. So first we're going to look at size of an atom. Um, so we're going to focus on the bonding atomic radius. So the bonding atomic radius is defined as one half the distance between covalently bonded nuclei. So essentially it's the distance between the nucleus and the outer edge of the electron cloud. Um, and when we focus on atomic radii, we're gonna be looking at trends within the bonding radii. Um, typically, non-bonding is a little bit bigger, um, but we're gonna focus on the bonding radii. Um, atomic radius can actually be influenced by nuclear pole and the number of energy levels. So those are the two um, things that can influence atomic radius. So nuclear pole, which essentially is effective nuclear charge, and then the number of energy levels. So when it comes to sizes of atoms, the bonding atomic radius tends to decrease from left to right across a row. So it gets smaller as you go left to right, and this is due to effective nuclear charge. And then it increases from top to bottom. So from top to bottom it increases, and this is due to increasing value of N. So what I want you to do is on your periodic table, or you can draw just an outline of a periodic table, um, I want you to label every periodic trend as we work through it. So at the end, you're gonna have a periodic table that has every periodic trend labeled on it. So to start, you're going to say the radius increases from top to bottom, and it increases from right to left. Okay, so it increases right to left. Um, it decreases left to right. So when it comes to the size of atoms, as we look across a row, so atoms decrease in size as electrons are being added to the same energy level. Okay? The reason that atoms decrease in size is because as we go from left to right, we're staying in the same energy level, but what we're changing is the number of protons. So as we go from left to right, we're adding protons. And so what that means is your effective nuclear charge is increasing. Because your effective nuclear charge is increasing, that means that your electron cloud is being pulled closer to the nucleus, resulting in a smaller atomic radius. So again, your effective nuclear charge is increasing. So the positive force coming from the nucleus is increasing. So that's increasing the attraction to the electrons, and so it's being pulled in closer to the nucleus, resulting in a smaller atomic radius. And then as we go down a group, so the atoms increase in size as we go down the group because we're adding a value of n every time. So your increased number of energy levels, which again is your value of n, increases. So we go from n equals 1 to n equals 2 to n equals 3 and so on. So we have the nucleus in the center. We're going n equals 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. So it's increasing the distance over which the nucleus has to pull the electrons. And so it's not as attracted to the electrons that are out really far. So because we're adding all of these energy levels, um, we are adding distance from the nucleus to the outermost electron level. Um, and full energy levels do provide some shielding. So if we're in n equals five, 
N equals 1 to 4 provides some shielding between the nucleus and the valence electrons, which also reduces the nuclear pole um, and increases the size. So again, with atomic radii, here is the trend that we have on the periodic table. So what I want you to do is label your periodic table. Let's pretend this arrow is straight. It increases going right to left and it increases, oh wow, oh wow, top to bottom. Let's pretend that's an arrow. So it increases going right to left and it increases going top to bottom. So this is the trend with atomic radii. Then we're going to look at ionic radii. So when we focus on ionic size, it depends upon a few things. It depends upon the nuclear charge, the number of electrons, and the orbitals that the electrons are in. So these are the three things that can um, influence ionic size. Now ionic size is the radius um, or ionic radius is the distance from the nucleus to the outer edge of the electron cloud, but it's within a charged ion instead of neutral. Um, the same radii trends do apply once you divide the table into metals and nonmetals. So what we're going to start with is looking at cations. So cations are all your metals. Notice at this periodic table, these are all of our metals. So we're focusing on metals here, and the positive metal ions result from the loss of valence electrons. So metals want to lose the electrons, and we'll talk about ionization energy, but metals want to lose electrons. And so the positive metal ions result from the loss of the valence electrons. Um, and in many cases, this means that your furthest electron is now in a lower energy level. So for instance, if we look at sodium, Okay, which is normally 3s1, when this loses an electron, we're now going down to 2p6. So once this electron is removed, we're no longer in n equals 3, we're now in n equals 2. So since we're in a smaller value of n, um, that decreases the size now. Okay, because instead of having three energy levels, we now only have two. Um, so within the metals, the positive ionic radii um, decreases from left to right. So as we go left to right, it decreases. Um, and then as electrons are lost, the reason that it decreases is because the ratio of protons to electrons increases. So as we lose more electrons, we're now, we now have a higher ratio of protons to electrons. Um, which means all of your protons are holding those electrons much closer um, and that means that they are held much more tightly. So because you have a higher ratio of protons to electrons, um, the electrons are being held much more tightly which is bringing um, the size down. Okay, then we're going to focus on anions. Okay, so cations are smaller than their neutral atom. Um, anions are larger than the neutral atom um, and this is because we are adding electrons and so your repulsions between electrons are increasing which is increasing the size. So if you notice the nonmetals are the ones that form anions. So the negative nonmetal ions result from adding valence electrons and this has to do with the electron affinity. So we have anions being formed now and these anions are negatively charged and they're larger. Um, and so because they're larger, we have to now focus on, well, what's going to happen as we go left to right and up and down a group. So if you notice, um, fluorine, okay, F minus is the smallest. And so they're going to decrease from left to right. Okay, so notice the trend still applies. You're decreasing left to right and you are increasing top to bottom. Um, the only difference is we have to split it into metals and nonmetals. So going back to anions, um, the main explanation is the change in the ratio again. So as we are adding electrons, okay, we're now adding more electrons compared to protons. So as electrons are added, the proton to electron ratio is decreasing. 
Okay, so proton to electron ratio is decreasing. What that means is there's more electrons, so these protons can't hold on to the electrons as well, and that's increasing the size um, because it's increasing the electron cloud. So you're adding electrons, which means you are adding to the electron cloud. You're adding repulsion, and that's going to increase the size. Okay, so when we look at size of ions, uh, like we mentioned, the ions increase in size as you go down a column. Okay, and again, that is still because you're increasing your value of N. So as you increase your value of N, you're adding energy levels, and that is increasing the size. Okay, and then what I want to focus on just briefly um, are the isoelectronic series. Now we've talked about what isoelectronic means, but now we're going to actually look at it um, as it applies to, in this case, ionic size. So in an isoelectronic series, ions have the same number of electrons. So the ionic size actually decreases with an increasing nuclear charge. So the more positive it is, the more it pulls the electrons closer and the smaller the ion is. So as an example, you have O2 minus, F minus, Na plus, Mg2 plus, and Al3 plus. Okay, these all have 10 electrons. Every single one of these ions has 10 electrons. So what we do when we want to put it in order is we look at charge. So when we increase nuclear charge, so O2 minus is, has the lowest charge, Al3 plus has the highest nuclear charge, that's going to actually decrease the ionic radius. Okay? Because Al3 plus, these protons are holding the electrons much more tightly, so it pulls the electron cloud in and it decreases the ionic radius. Versus O2 minus, which has two extra electrons, so your protons can't hold that as well, and that's what gives it a larger size. All right, so that is it for um, your ionic size and your atomic radii. Um, be sure that you've looked over everything. See if you have any questions. If you do, let me know. Um, if not, you can move on to ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity.